What's up, everybody? It's your boy Ooch, and I'm here with Brother Ooch, and we are back again. once again. How you guys doing today? What up? We're back, episode 31. We passed the 30 threshold, and I think we have been uh, pumping these out very consistently uh, in the last few weeks. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, yes, I gotta give give the shout outs to when the shout outs are due. But of course, without further ado, before we get into any of this discussion, like I said in the intro, Brother Ooch is back again once again. How you doing, sir? I'm great, I'm great. Another day, another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the grass is green, sky's blue, right? Of course. So, it's gonna be snowy soon, but it's all good. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true over there. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, uh, by the time I get over there again, there'll still be some snow on the ground, so I can uh, experience that. Since <laughs> I have missed out on snow for literally a year straight, which is actually longer than that technically. Um, it's really weird for me, but either way. We're here to talk more Dragon Ball, more anime, greatness, of course. This is the Full Power Podcast, and uh, I'd like to think this is the, the best anime podcast, or best whatever. we just out here. And uh, first and foremost, I want to go over some of the comments from last week's episode. So for those really quick that don't know, you guys can actually listen to these episodes early via the Patreon. If you are a Patreon of mine, I do post these up early if you don't want to wait for Spotify, if you don't want to wait for YouTube. Um, and very soon, we will do video versions with like, you know, seeing us on screen. Um, so definitely let us know in the comments if that's something you you want to see a lot sooner. Because, you know, if we see that you guys actually do care about doing seeing that, then let me know. So, without further ado, um, let's get into these, some of these comments. So, we got we got someone saying that Brother Ooch with the good quality news. So, I guess that's a, that's a shout out for you there. <laughs> um, What's that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were trying to say, like, what, what, what you bring to the podcast is, like, is quality. Like, you, you just, you, you, you have your your thoughts and opinions and it's and it's, it's it's on some good shit so makes sense word yes um so <laughs> this person says whenever we got brother ooch it is as the beat goes it's lit <laughs> <laughs> Bro, i like that but... um they also say your comments on the my hero movie really makes me go well, i want to go watch it also with what's coming in the anime next season well, you sure need to get it on the podcast. I agree. I definitely would love to talk more My Hero, but I, I feel like I can't unless I have folks here on the show that are caught up with the manga. Because I'm the only one as of right now. I'm pretty sure Kai reads, but you know he's out until December. Um, so, of course, we're, we're missing Kai as always. Hopefully, that, re that recovery is going speedy. Um, but yeah, Brother Ush, he don't read nothing. Never. <laughs> <laughs> never. No, I don't say never, because if it's on some emergency situation type stuff, you will read fucking manga. Alright, the only thing I have ever read is some of Attack on Titan, because it was urgent, and <laughs> the end of Naruto type shit. <laughs> yes. Like Naruto Shippuden, put in like that whole moment because I because I needed to know what whatever I needed to know for the movie I think. Right. When we went to Japan, right? Yes. Or so, something. true story, yeah. really quick. Back in 2015, um, Naruto was ending, and I was also graduating college at the same time, and it was very crazy because of course you know lots been lots going on in school. I had like six jobs. And then, like I said, Naruto was wrapping up, and you know, I, I said I said very uh, vividly in the last episode that not Naruto and I are like we we I feel like I grew up with this dude, so I'm very close with that series. And when it was ending, it was like wow, like I can't believe it's over, like like it's over. And 
next thing you know like shortly thereafter the the very last chapter came out the news broke that the story would continue with his through his son boruto and then shortly thereafter that they have revealed that there was gonna be a movie coming out that summer and i literally went straight to this man i said you have to read <laughs> the last like the, the like everything that because the anime was like it was it was still in the war but it was still far behind so i made i pretty much made this dude read the entirety of the war just to make sure because 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 then of course as a part of a um like happy graduation celebratory i forget whatever you did um during that time but mom made it a whole like the three of us are going i remember when we laughed we we're like we're not going, <laughs> we're not going to Japan. <laughs> like that was that was some funny shit we didn't we didn't believe it until we were leaving japan like that's how crazy it was but point mm -hmm. point being i wanted to make sure that this dude was going to have have the knowledge of what happened so because there was no way i was about to be in the area of where all this shit comes from and not see that movie i don't care mm -hmm. if it was subbed or not and of course it wasn't so we had to watch that shit raw i don't think i've ever watched any anime raw before um you know that's how that's how you know i had to i had to be there for the experience and the experience was worth it because you could you could kind of you can kind of tell through the context of, you know, how their how their tone was and the things that were happening and whatnot. And it was definitely worth it. So, yeah. So, that, that, like like he said, when it's urgent. The other time when it was urgent, like he said, Attack on Titan. I was, well, this was, this was before then. I was still in school. I think I was, uh, I think it was, I was either a fret. I think I might have been a freshman still at that point in time. Maybe a freshman, sophomore. I can't remember. But, um. I had to have at least been a sophomore, I think. But uh, I was reading the manga, and <laughs> it was the part where we finally we finally find out the 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 identity of the armored and colossal titan. I text this man, and I'm like, bro, I know who the armored and colossal titan, and he goes, what chapter? <laughs> <laughs> I told him yeah, no, exactly true. the chapter and he he was just blowing on my phone and saying, What? What? Like you know, freaking out. Like it was it was hilarious. It was I wish I was there to see him in, in person. That's but, true, crazy. True story. The only one is urgent. I don't know I don't know what would have to happen for you to read anything else on some urgency. Like, do, do you even know what would have to happen in any series that you really, really, really fuck with? I don't even know, because, like, I haven't even read Bleach and that shit, and I've wanted that shit to come back Yo, forever. Oh, and that's crazy. Like, and I love that shit. Yes. I just, wow, I need but I just don't want to fucking read <laughs> it, because <laughs> I don't get the same, I don't get the same feel. I don't get, just buy it pictures and shit like i need animation that's, that's what i need mm -hmm. yeah that's we know we definitely mm -hmm. we definitely know it's it's unfortunate because you miss out but you know everybody I'm, there's other people that are like you i'm sure you know but the difference is at some, everybody has a cracking moment i suppose i suppose mm -hmm. so food for thought so um so as far as the fate of Goku and Vegeta, this is the same person, by the way. So this, it was like a multi-part uh, comment. So the next thing they said, as far as the fate of Goku and Vegeta in uh, Dragon Ball goes, your points really justify the argument with a thumbs up emoji. So thanks. But other than the idea pitched, if we are going classic cookie cutter Dragon Ball after end of Z and the tournament, I can see them following some extent of the GT's uh, good plot points like Ooh, Pan, etc. But Goku and Vegeta definitely gonna fight some more strong villains, get their asses handed to them, go train, get stronger, new form, defeat villain, rinse, repeat, maybe throw some Broly in there for good measure, huh? Um, but hey, if they do switch it up and surprise the shit out of us, I'm all for it. So, um, what do you do? You have anything to say to that? 
Nah, what he said is, is valid. But I mean, if they're gonna take anything from GT, um, they better not make Goku small as fuck. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I will throw Dragon Ball out the fucking window <laughs> at that point, bro. Yo, let me. That, uh, I'll spat, that's facts number one. Number two. Um, part of this comment actually has everything to do with our main topic, which we'll get to um, very, very soon, I imagine, after we get through some of these comments. So, um, uh, I, think, I think there's only... Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, because the only other person that said something was... Um, they, were, they, were, they were dropping some comparison knowledge with between Dragon Ball and Black Myth Wukong, which is... I'm pretty sure this was the same person. It almost feels like it was a bot that said this because <laughs> I feel like I read the exact same comment. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure this dude said this before. And because I didn't have a video on this channel about it, even when I said, go check out my other channel, AKA Uchi Games. That is where all of my video games content is, which Black Mo Myth Wukong is then definitely go check it out. I've already done a bunch of uh, reactions and whatnot coverage for that game. That game is, of course, heavily inspired by the, um, the, uh, what do you, what is the, the, the Journey to the West, which obviously Dragon Ball is also somewhat, well, it is based on, at least with the first part, you know, Dragon Ball. Um, so yeah, go check that out if you guys are interested in that game. That game is about to be a, a crazy, amazing looking one player experience i don't know if they're gonna involve multiplayer at some point it would be kind of cool but either way i'm down for a game like that anyway so and yeah and then uh the only other thing that someone said was how do they want to they want to know how do they watch the video podcast but they were uh saying that as if we already had the video like video versions where you can see us uh visually so in time it'll happen sooner than later just give us some time and hopefully we'll get that going for you guys like i said sooner than later um so yeah other than that uh that is all of the comments from the last uh the last week's episode um over on youtube there's no uh i didn't get any um emails or anything like that so again guys if you want to uh directly interact with us outside of the youtube for whatever reason you're not watching this view through youtube um, you can hit us up, uh, fullpowerpod at gmail.com. That is fullpowerpod at gmail.com. And if you are for whatever reason, because I know I checked the analytics and it seems like a lot of you guys, a lot of you listeners rather, are um, listening through Spotify. So definitely uh, shout out to the uh, podcast listeners if you use Spotify. There are polls. They have a feature where you can actually answer questions via the Spotify app or I guess like on the web browser or whatever so please 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 answer some of those polls we want to get your you guys interactions with this with us all right so without further ado the main topic at hand head to thewaypro.com and use my code ushi10 to save 10 percent off the entire website and it is this <laughs> so off of what we were talking about last week um, I, the main theme was, I felt like they were scared to let Goku and Vegeta go, a AKA like, just, you know, put them on the bench, you know, have them be background characters rather than foreground characters, let them not be the focal points, the main character, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, we're done. Like they're, they're way past that point. Right. So off of that, this, t uh, this week's topic is how they can possibly still use Goku and Vegeta post end of Z. So like uh, our one commenter was was basing it on that they could be very cookie cutter, bread and butter, whatnot, and pull from GT. Now here's here's my thing. And I, and I feel like I have talked about this before. And I want your thoughts on this. And I feel like you're probably gonna agree with me. You might add some, you might, you know, talk about how however this goes right so realistically right because they've already gone to a point with ultra instinct and well, with vegeta having like his path towards the god of destruction route and that's it right like realistically 
there shouldn't be anything beyond that because then it really would then it's really gonna start to not make sense because how do you how do you have stronger than what's what's believed to be or not even believed to be but what's factually known to be the end all be all that's it like there is nothing above this you know what i'm saying yeah so yeah so aside from that they're kind of already exploring this whole strongest in the universe thing while also keeping readers in mind that goku's ultra instinct and vegeta's ultra ego they they still have plenty of room to explore with those forms so that way you know they can obviously optimize them much like how they basically treat super saiyan um you know so i thought well how can they realistically still be focal points while also maintaining that essence of their of their powered up their latest strongest forms being ultra instinct ultra ego well rather than treating it like a freaking kaioken where it's like oh they could just combine super saiyan with all like that i mean that's a little disrespectful because i don't know how you're gonna treat ultra instinct like kaioken in that in that sense right even though technically ultra instinct is definitely a technique even though you know, visually yeah. it would say otherwise um agreed yep so here here's here i had to explain all that to get to this right the only way and, and i'm telling you this is the only way because we're already we're already handling somebody and this whole th theme of strongest in the universe type stuff so after this like they can't just do it again because it's just like what are you doing right the only way they can possibly make any kind of sense is if they fight against characters whether they're villains or whether they're just other beings whether they're in universe 7 or another universe altogether the only there's actually well okay technically there's two i just thought of the second the second one and i'll, and I'll actually uh throw this one out first because this one's kind of like obvious low-key is if they literally fight against other gods and angels right they all that, that is the only way for it to make sense because now they're fighting against other beings that are literally on that are literally on their level um and because they're known to do basically they can do the same things as goku and vegeta because right now it's just like they can handle any other foe just fine right because at that at this point in this future however you know months years from where we're at now in the story at that point they should be able to just handle any anybody period right so i'll throw that out there just to throw it now my my what i really what i'm really getting to here is they'd have to fight people again villains or just other beings that have some sort of ability or some sort of trait to them that essentially nullifies any kind of god energy so super saiyan god out of the question super saiyan blue out of the question ultra instinct out of the question these types of forms would be would be rendered useless because for whatever reason this character is completely they, they null and void that shit like it, it just doesn't work right and whether they write it like that so it's like they could technically still use it but when they use it it's like they notice like they that nothing is happening like they, they can't get through to this dude um or whoever it is and like they're just struggling and they're just trying to find some sort of of a realistic way to overcome this threat right I feel like yo, I feel like they've done that before, and but I I think it was in GT. Not gonna cap. Really? If I'm if I'm correct, it and this is if my memory is that fucking good. Like I'm <laughs> I'm pretty like I really feel like there was a point in GT where Goku, cause you know the red is it was it the Red Star Dragon Balls or some shit like that. Black Star, Black Star. The Bla Black Star. Yeah, they were going for them shits. Like they were on whatever journey, and I'm pretty sure one of one of the the ninjas with the black star dragon balls, they 
they had some ability or whatever to where like Goku couldn't turn Super Saiyan or some shit like that. I'm pretty sure, and like they had a, they basically had to beat him regularly, which they did. Right. <laughs> but, but I'm pretty sure. Like, does that make sense? Yes. Like to what kind of you're saying? Like I'm pretty sure. I'm. I don't believe it's canon, just because we we haven't seen it in Z or in Super, mm -hmm. as of right now, with, where they had encountered a problem like that. Right. Um. If anyone's listening to this, man, and I'm right with GT right there, <laughs> that's it. Nah, nah. <laughs> but, but then, then at that point, they'll just be taking a, uh, an idea out of GT if they do that um, shit. Yeah. But that's that's what I gotta say on that. <laughs> if, okay. if if that um, happens or some shit. But yeah, what you're saying, I guess kind of. But you can continue what you're saying uh, if you had more. Oh yeah, there's plenty more. There's pl there's plenty more, and and. And with that establishment, right, the whole point that I'm trying to drive here is that, okay, if they can't use their god powers, then what else do they have? Well, Super Saiyan probably wouldn't be enough. Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3 wouldn't be enough. So they realize that maybe they have to look and just really dig deep within their own Saiyan roots and and pull something out pun intended the tail because they have to push forward and really show how saints aren't nothing to fuck with and here comes how they write in super saiyan 4. yo would you agree or uh well yeah i'm gonna just say it but would you believe or challenge that we could argue um that super saiyan 4 if they were to bring back a tail is like we could say a natural form for them like Bro. Es essentially like um like naruto's fucking the one ability they are the you know what i'm talking about the toja the sage the sage mode yeah like equivalent to that in a sense so I wouldn't. Like, could, I wouldn't nah. necessarily. I mean, that you. I guess. I get. I get what you mean because the sage mode used like the natural. yeah the natural shit around them. I I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, could, like I don't. I'm. I'm kind of digging deep here with the super saiyan four <laughs> shit. Like, kind of claiming it to be a natural form or some shit. Like, above ape. Like, you feel me? Because like technically, technically, the tail once you look at the moon and shit right like they become the ape uh and then like if whoever like once you become the ape if you can control it and shit like that's when super saiyan 4 happens so like it's kind of natural like you feel me i don't know i'm like i don't know if it's making sense but that, like that's just that's just something to think about i guess if like if this villain ever comes into play or character to where they like nothing nothing like super saiyan like works and then like super saiyan 4 quote unquote is natural <laughs> like you, you feel me? this is literally what i'm saying and and, <laughs> and to what you just brought up is some shit that i have been saying for years is that i i truly believe that the natural power of a saiyan right the true super saiyan okay is when they have all of all of what makes a saiyan a saiyan and they are able to uh, like use it exploit it to its fullest and then some okay because and this is gonna sound kind of crazy right but let's just think about this for a second I believe in a sense, Goku and Vegeta were nerfed from a very early point in this story. Okay. 100%. <laughs> because think about it. They took Vegeta's tail away. Why? Because when he had it, he was stronger than everybody. My man went ape and literally bodied everybody. It took it took so much for them to to just defeat him in his grade eight form they, they they had to figure out that obviously the source of his power was the tail and so uh lo and behold he just got rid of it all together never seen him with a freaking tail again 
Okay. Now, with Goku, they got rid of that shit early on when he was younger as well. Why? Same fucking reason. When he went ape, they couldn't... They, 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 he couldn't control it. He had... Like, it's, it's almost as if, like, these characters to a degree would undergo something similar to what Broly has lived throughout most of his life. Now, we're starting to finally hopefully see and believe that he will maybe one day learn how to hone that unlimited potential and and to really use that to his greatest ability. Because I feel like Broly legit could end up being at the actual strongest person in the history of Dragon Ball 3, just because of how he was written, okay? Now back to Goku and Vegeta for a second, because I, I like, and well, I, honestly, it really, Broly plays a, a huge part in this, as far as my, um, as far as like my evidence to, to back everything that I'm saying right now, because when you think about it, okay, Goku and Vegeta had no tail, right? But then they yet they still went under the same they, they still went through all of the same rigorous shit where they went through some traumatic stuff. They were still training and getting stronger and fighting people that were stronger than them and naturally as Saiyans and how the story has been told, these dudes get stronger every time they fight. So when you take something away that's supposed to amplify them already and they're being literally pushed beyond their limits at said points in time, what's going to happen? They're going to fucking unlock something and <laughs> look what happened with Broly. They took his tail away and this man, he, 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 see, he's different, he's different in a way, but similar. Okay, because he is no Goku and Vegeta. Goku and Vegeta are no Broly. Broly is the type of dude who he was so strong that he got to some shit that I don't believe Goku and Vegeta haven't even explored yet because they're not like this guy because they have been on all of these different adventures and they've had all these different opponents to fight against. That they've been navigating like once they found something that's that's been their focus and then they just try to build upon that you know like goku was the first uh the first character on screen to have discovered super saiyan according to what they believe right but look at what happens after that super saiyan 2 essentially just becomes uh an enhanced saiyan and it didn't even get the name Super Saiyan 2 until Goku called it that when he was explaining Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and then naturally, you know, like, like it goes back to the whole constant training, constant fighting people that are strong and all that stuff. And Goku's always trying to become, you know, stronger than before on some Power Rangers Zio shit. And even well, even while dead, he he fucking figured out how to go Super Saiyan 3, right? <laughs> so, as silly as that shit is, that's just how it goes. But, they did all this with no tails, right? Now, it, 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 like, I, I really feel like if, if they had their tails, I feel like something might have happened a little bit differently. Because, what happened, if we look at Broly... All right, he had an overflowing power source, which, you know, internally within himself, this shit was just, it would just literally pour out of him and to the point where he couldn't really control his anger. And it got to the point where when he finally started, and let, let's also keep this in mind, when my man first got actual opponents in Goku and Vegeta, because let's not forget, for so many years, this dude only had his dad to fight against and bah okay <laughs> he had nobody to throw hands with so he finally gets to fight against dudes that are of his race obviously uh levels stronger than him or so we believed you know just based on what they've been able to achieve but let's just think about this 
This dude Broly, off of his own raw power, was able to fight against the, the likes of their Super Saiyan forms, their Super Saiyan God forms, and then when shit started getting really out of control, when he 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 forced them to go Super Saiyan Blue, which at the time was their highest uh, power that they were able to pretty much tap into consistently. Okay, because obviously Goku he farted and Ultra Instinct came out, <laughs> and that's all we saw of Ultra Instinct that entire movie, right? But it literally took them to fuse into Gogeta and then go Super Saiyan Blue all the way up to Super Saiyan Blue just to throw hands with us with a full power Super Saiyan Broly okay let just just think about that for a second dude Broly was in his base form okay and even when when he started when he had to turn it up look what happened he snapped and what what, what we've always believed that Saiyans needed. They needed a moon, right? They needed a moon to tap into their their ape states, their Ozaru forms. But what happens when you have these unique characters that are so above and beyond the norm of understanding? This is the shit that happens. Okay, I still to this day, ever since we left that theater for the fucking very first time, I I've I've been saying this for years. I believe that if this guy had his tail, he probably would have forced a fucking ape form evolution. He literally would have went straight ape with no moon. I believe that if you're that strong, you don't need a moon because the moon emits the blood waves or whatever the fucking thing is called, right? It it, it emits those waves that 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 just kind of it's like almost like the, they use the moon as a cheat code in a sense yeah you know to, to bring about this this uh ozaru state and i really believe that if roly had that he would have he would have went great ape son i'm telling you yeah, yeah, i mean like so the whole thing about broly right like by the time this man enters his super saiyan I guess we'll call it Super Saiyan Ozaru state or whatever. Like this man has no subconscious. <laughs> like this man, <laughs> this man, this man literally like, and this is just his this like design of a character. Honestly, like he doesn't, he has no conscience, bro. Like, and I don't know if that's a, the reason why he's able to access all this fucking unlimited source of power and just get stronger while the, while he's fighting type of thing. Um. Because, like, because Goku and Vegeta, for example, like, they have conscious, like, like, they adapt as they fight and stuff, but, and we can argue that they, they might gain some strength, and maybe, like, when they fight, uh, it's, it's occasional, but, like, but, like, Broly's whole design of a character, he, he just, he gets stronger as he fights, but then he, he just loses himself, so, mm -hmm. and then I feel, I feel like characters that lose themselves, yeah, they gain all this strength, especially while fighting, but, like, and, like, they don't, they don't, I don't, I feel like characters like that, they don't adapt, like, fr like, how Goku or Vegeta would adapt in a, in a fight, like, they don't, like, they just go all out, like, they, they let everything go, type of, like, you kind of get what I'm saying? I do. Like, because, basically, the point I'm trying to kind of make in see like if it were to ever happen like what if broly became conscious of the form he was in like would he still gain all this power like well even while fighting or like would it calm down essentially like you know what i'm saying like it's a great question that's those are a great like, series of questions to have because like because goku and vegeta they don't lose control like they like whenever they access a new state or form like i guess I guess some something I'm gonna point out here is a little interesting, but like for example, Ultra Instinct. Like when Goku first became Ultra Instinct, I felt me personally, I think he was not fully conscious. Like, hmm. like he let himself go in that moment, I believe. Yeah. Um, and because it was just completely new and it came out the blue, like type of thing. Right. And 
that was like when shit like that happens and when a character loses themselves and they don't and they're not conscious and they just let like their bodies do whatever like i feel like that's when they gain the most power because they're not the ones in control which is weird <laughs> it's like they have demons inside and shit and they're just <laughs> they're they're just the ones that are like fucking um like accessing all this power because like you see we see it in anime all the time honestly like when a character loses control and they access a new form they just they have all this power but they um like they don't fight smart i'll say like, yeah it, like it's different yeah i it's get you. different it's a it's a whole different feel like what if we saw a controlled broly that adapts and fights like goku and shit like you know, like you, you kind of see what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like that's something that we would have to see if it were to ever happen. Like, I don't, I don't know if, um, I don't know how you, how much they're gonna utilize Broly and shit from that here on out. But like, if Goku's training with Broly, like maybe Goku Loki is trying to get him to be more conscious of whatever state of form he's in, because he has all this like unnecessarily unnecessary power, like behind him because whenever he lets go like he that's when it all comes out exactly and then, yeah <laughs> I, I i truly yeah so what you're saying that's a that's a very everything you just said was so thorough and accurate okay because th you brought up amazing points that i haven't addressed yet and that is very true right and yo they even like low key bro like even in like gt like like super saiyan 4 and shit like goku was in control <laughs> like when he went from ape to access super saiyan 4 like right in his normal the... state in his normal body state like when uh, like and you know when a character loki loses control because like you don't see their like their eyes and shit like they're it's just like completely white like broly yes yes right yeah so like i don't know bro <laughs> well no okay so hold on so so to that right th 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 like you again this this literally all of everything you just said literally is still plays into what i'm saying or what i'm trying to say is because this guy when he when when, when right now during the fight with, with goku and vegeta he did what he was able to do out of control with no tail he still accessed his Ozaru form and they confirmed it. Okay, I remember when Paragus literally was like, it's almost as if like he is in his great ape state, but yeah. he has no tail. And like, and I mean, it, it, it was proof because he even got a little bigger, you know? He Dude. got a little bigger and he was still dominating these freaking dudes. And it only, it, 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 and, and it literally took Frieza's curiosity just to be like i wonder if he could go super Saiyan. and he <laughs> kills his motherfucking dad right on the spot and proved it just like like monkey see fucking monkey do and that is like dude that is is how the saiyans work he literally like like look at look at when when goku was getting his hits in and then broly would counter with the same shit like goku was doing things that broly was never doing and like and like i brought up these were his first real opponents so it's almost as if like he was taking this fight as a learning experience and trying to apply the things that he was seeing before him and guess what goku does the same fucking shit when he fights with people even if he doesn't do it that same fight he will he will he'll start to do shit that he normally don't really do later down the line like i remember at one point in time this dude was not doing destructo this he was not doing solar flares these were fucking krillin's moves you know what i'm saying mm. he wasn't he there was the few times where he he was about to try to do the vegeta explosion right and they stopped him thank god because we were just like all right goku enough like stop it right but this is this is how the saiyans are they are literally monkey see monkey do broly is the best example of that so going back to what you're talking about with it what you brought to the table here with this whole conversation of Broly, like, 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 even if he had his tail, right? And let's say he did access that great ape form, he would have, he literally would have been in complete out of control, exactly. And that's what would have prevented him from going 
Super Saiyan 4, or what I've called already Primal Instinct, because this is, I mm. believe, the the true Super Saiyan like state where they go from their regular Saiyan to Great Ape, and then once they have full control consciousness of that ape state but they're still able to like access the next step that is what a true super saiyan for from what we've seen in the past or what a primal instinct saying is okay because right when goku was his golden ape form in gt and right when vegeta had the 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 fucking walmart bulma fucking <laughs> Bloods wave machine so that she can yeah. she can help boost her hus her husband to to be on the same level as Goku for a short uh, few episodes, right? As soon as they regain that conscious state, and that were then and they were still trying to push a little further beyond, boom, that's when they unlock the 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 next level, and they they even take on the form of a monkey. And you can even look at the examples of just the, the what they were able to figure out on their own, okay? With the Super Saiyan levels. Because look at how the, 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 the further they get with these, with these Saiyan enhancements, right? They, they, it's almost like they take on the, the, the look of, uh, of an ape. Like the it's in it's in the facial features, the eyebrows, the hair. Obviously, it's all like focused in one in one point coming out of their fucking heads. But it's just like like that that is the evidence right in and of itself. So by the time they're in this new Super Saiyan Four Primal Instinct right there, they got the they got the fur, they got the they got the difference in their eyes, they got different eye color, the, the hair patterns are completely different. And of course, they're naturally way more strong. And that is the point that I'm trying to drive home here is that they would have to have of a, a, a somebody that would make or would force them to use their true inner Saiyan power that natively would have to then reach to whatever the next level is. Because obviously right now it is of course believe that you know the god of destruction power the angel power you know with through ultra instinct is is that's you know those are the strongest forms period and then of course involving the super saiyan um aspects to them because i mean that's literally what super saiyan blue is that is remember when they used to call that shit super saiyan god super saiyan mm. <laughs> you know that yeah. that is what it is but now take that shit away, you know, remove that God stuff. They now have to realize, they have to make that connection that this is how strong we could be without these, these golden hair looks to us. Like we could be, we could be Broly, right? We could be that dude and a mat and see, and the difference is what you pointed out is that Goku and Vegeta, they have control. Broly does not. That is the one separation factor, aside from the raw power that they got, bro. He yeah, Loki, like, Ultra Instinct in itself, like, like you have to be aware from what I've kind of seen and shit. And, like, especially from, like, I think what Whis and shit has said, um, like, that form in itself, like, like, you kind of like you, you it's kind of hard to explain i think i kind of forget what we actually said or whatever the case may be like when they were talking about the form but like ultra instinct overall is like being completely self-aware and just like and you like i mean goku's ultra instinct is just retarded just because like <laughs> this man dodges shit he adapts like dumb quick like right well, yeah, you feel me? Like, they like, made Ultra Instinct the embodiment of Bruce Lee. Everything and nothing. <laughs> you have to, yeah, you no. have to be the water. The water is you. Like you have to be all knowing, but then know nothing. Like you have to literally just yeah. freely move. That is, that is Ultra Instinct. Exactly. So, like, with that being said, like 
it's almost as if like that form is practiced in becoming just completely in control self-aware and free so like if they were to ever actually bring out their tails and access ozaru and then like once they're in the ozaru state like they're they they have that control already mentally and shit like they would access like suit technically super saiyan 4 like practically instantly honestly right exactly and, like and then it would they would be full control and shit and i and i mean they could take it however way they want after that but yep that's what i would say honestly yeah <laughs> Yeah, so like realistically, right? Like this whole this whole arc that I'm imagining is is literally it, the purpose it serves is to, of course, have Goku and Vegeta as your main stars still, right? But then to give them a new challenge that I'm sure not a lot of people would really see, but it also kind of ties in with some of the things some of the good things i should say to take away from gt because obviously with everything that's been happening in super it's it's very clear and very easy to say you know point blank that gt just doesn't matter anymore right because it, it's it's like super is essentially retconning the, gt's existence because right now in the current story state we haven't even reached that point yet we're getting there but we gotta get to the end of Z first. And then once we're there, whatever happens after is when we can really see what happens. Because I can't imagine them not taking advantage of the fucking hype and huge blow up that people are gonna have when that is the next fucking thing. Because let's face it, People love to be the first ones to say, oh, GT was shit, it's non-canon, it sucks, it's the worst. But then, in the fucking same breath, or in the back of their minds, or whether they're hiding in a fucking corner, they are the same motherfuckers that will love Gogeta, they're gonna love Super Saiyan 4, and the concept of even the Black Star Dragon Balls, Omega Shenron, Android 17, or Super 17, like those those things that I just named are what made GT good, right? I'm not gonna say GT was the best thing ever. I'm never gonna fucking say that. But I am gonna call out what I loved about it and what made people interested. Cause I can tell you as a kid, when GT was literally on the cusp of making its television debut, when I, there was a kid in my class and he brought some kind of fucking like magazine or some shit to school one day. And he's looking through the pages and showing people around him and, and, it, and it was basically like a news source that was revealing that what was coming up on Toonami was Dragon Ball GT. And they had the preview images and they straight up showed what a fucking Super Saiyan 4 looked like. And as a kid, I saw that shit and I was like, what the fuck? Like, this is God. Like, I'm like third, fourth grade at the time. And and I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I can't wait to see this shit. I don't care. Like, like, I don't even care. Like, and of course, they, they were talking about the Black Star Dragon Balls as well. But I'm just like, I don't care what the fuck is about to happen. I just want to see that. So naturally, you as a kid, you know, you stay watching it, you watch, you watch, you watch it, and you see it through. And there was a point in time where I fell off because like this was also during the same time where like we were moving and you know, there was a whole divorce going on and <laughs> I had to go to different schools and readjust and all this other shit. And I was still playing sports and I couldn't play video games during the week, so I had to fucking find other things to do, right? Um, but, you know, then, but but still, shortly thereafter, even all those things, like, I, that was when we started collecting the DVDs of GT. Mm -hmm. There's 15 fucking DVDs, have them all, all right? They're still over there, okay? And made sure that we, we saw all of GT and what happened, including the movie that followed after that, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it was bad, but you know what? Like, I don't think it was so terrible to the point where it, 
it's it's unwatchable. Like it, it was just like they just did things that like the big one, Goku turning into a kid. Listen, that chalked the entire show. I, yo, I'm telling you. And the problem, the problem with that is just an, an entire different. That could be an, a, its own episode on this podcast. I don't, know, I, don't yeah. I don't know who thought of that shit, but that nigga got get fired. <laughs> Listen, I could tell you exactly, really quick, why that even happened. They wanted to go back to Dragon Ball roots, and they wanted to make Goku basically the child hero again you know without uh, whatever because like that 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 to them at this point in time back in the day in japan they didn't know what else to do i mean akira toriyama was done right he he wanted the story to end with apparent well it's always it, it's weird because online you'll always hear a lot of different things you'll hear that oh the story was originally supposed to end with cell but obviously what ended up happening was he still wrote it all the way through to the end of Majin Buu. And then that's where the manga ends. That is that is Akira Toriyama's work is done at this point. GT was all Toei. Toei was like, nah, we got to keep this shit going. So they decided that they wanted to make a brand new show. And they they, they, they looked at how the like thematically every arc or every major arc of Dragon Ball has the child protagonist. Ever since Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball was Goku. Then Dragon Ball Z was Gohan. Literally, it was Gohan all the way to Cell, if you think about it, right? Despite who was getting the jobs done, Gohan was intent. He was intent. He was the intended main character at that point, aside, like uh, alongside Goku, I guess you could say, right? Yeah, Loki, Loki, Loki. Yeah. yeah. And then. By the time Goku's dead, Gohan is in high school, and it's seven years later or whatever, like, he was still the main character, but he had a brother and his brother's friend, Vegeta Sun Trunks and Goten, right? So that is where the story was supposed to kind of focus around, but somehow, some way, Vegeta and Goku still ended up being the, the, the dudes to really bring it home, despite... Gotenks having his moment and Gohan having his moment with Ultimate Gohan or Gohan unlock fucking full potential Supreme Kai whatever the fuck you <laughs> want to call it right that was there yeah that was tough you know yeah so like it was cool right but despite all that it was still up to Goku and Vegeta and even fucking Hercule right and so that story has come and passed so after all that they're like well shit Gohan is about to have a daughter, but they at this point in time they must have not have fully believed in making Pan the real fucking heroine for the time. So <laughs> what did they do? They made her fucking grandpa kid again, and there it is. That is GT. That was the that is GT conceptualized, and of course that's why when they made Super Saiyan Four. They literally had. They, they, they that's the reason why Super Saiyan Four was adult. Uh, it was in adult form because they also it also drove home the idea, the ideology that Super Saiyan Four is so strong that it was able to break a fucking wish that Shenron <laughs> that that was placed on Goku. Think about that. He was going Super yeah. Saiyan One all the way to three in his child in his kid state. Super Saiyan Four forced him back into an adult body bro that's how strong yeah. that shit is so if they apply that into super or whatever they decide to call it going forward after they finally get to this end of z shit then i feel like that'll be the next and should be the last fucking big hurrah for goku and vegeta right they have their super saiyan 4 moment and and and, and with that we learn that yes, Saiyans have a very, very, very almost unlimited type of source of power through their own innate natural abilities through, you know, not nerfing themselves by removing a tail. I feel like if they kept, if they, if you keep the fucking tail and you go on and you, and you stay fighting and all this shit, you're training with people that are stronger than you and you're, you're constantly pushing your limits and whatnot then word 
you're gonna you have that chance that opportunity to fucking unlock that kind of power because think about it i mean like they've even made they've even written super saiyan right the super saiyan form the golden hair that we have literally known and seen and loved for years okay we've seen that we've seen that uh almost demoted to the point where as the generations carry on that shit is just like a fucking light switch they it's like they're gonna come out the womb with the gold hair you know what i'm saying like you pissed all you take the chocolate away you take the toy away ah boom <laughs> they're a fucking super saiyan you know i just think that that's just one of it, it, it's one of those things that should have realistically just been almost kind of like a a plan a preliminary kind of power up it should really just be treated as like kind of like a powered up thing not like this is uh, the next i mean not obviously for you know e explanation purposes and understanding like yes their forms they're taking on different uh physical traits and whatnot but at the end of the day like these are just power-ups like essentially what i guess what i'm also trying to point out is like super saiyan should really just be another kaioken in comparison to what they could have been doing with uh tapping into their great ape state and then going into you know their primal instinct aka super saiyan 4 yeah i agree <laughs> so yeah i hope i hope that one day we do see that happen because that, that honestly that, that i don't I, I wouldn't know any other way to write it better and outside of you know they all learn this and it's the three of them it's vegeta it's goku and it's broly i would love for broly to be the first one to fucking do it but i feel like conceptually i feel like goku might be the one to come up with the idea because you know he's all he's smart when it comes to fighting and when, he, when it comes to realizing things and when and if he ever thinks back while training with Broly, because we've already we've already got confirmation that he's training with Broly in the upcoming movie, even if it's for fucking five seconds, I wanna I wanna I wanna see that connection. Honestly, I feel like Vegeta would be the one to figure it out, and I then like so. Goku. Yeah, no, nah, because Vegeta he knows he knows about the Ozaru because he's dealt with it and he's he's been it. Right. So like, so um yeah i feel like he would kind of connect the dots more so than goku would if vegeta like helped goku kind of train broly maybe one day or something like that right. and like and like they would both come to the conclusion that like he's in an ozaru type of state and then vegeta would connect the dots essentially and be like well like the tail like yes. to, that that's how you that's how you reach ozaru and then like then they'll then they'll fucking pull that shit out of their ass maybe <laughs> i don't fucking know like they did in gt yeah I, well see that that part was funny when they did that i remember when they literally had they came they tried to do so much shit to get that to pull that shit right back out of fucking goku's freaking ass it looked like it was out of his ass but realistically it's not it's fucking it's like it's literally the at the end of his tailbone which is right above yeah right, yeah it's right, right above right so Oh, yeah. oh, man, I freaking, I hope, I really do hope that one day we do get to see that because that would, that at that point, that would be like everything that we would have ever wanted to see for any sort of returns or future arcs because let's face it, we got Broly, even, even before that we got Trunks back and we got an evil Goku and we got to see the fusions again with Vegito and Gogeta. On top of that, we, we got even more forms that I'm sure we even ever expected to fucking see on top of all these other cool characters and whatnot and, and great fights, you know, within Super. So I can't complain. The only other thing that's left on this fucking wish list is to see Super Saiyan 4 come back in in this actual story done the right way and the natural way so uh, that's uh that's 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 it that's that's that is basically this fucking episode that i want to talk about with you man because 
it's, it, to me, it's easy conceptually. Like this is what they have to do. But if not, then it's just gonna be more of a mess going forward. Yeah, we're just gonna have to see, man. Shit. Yeah. That's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um. I think yeah, that's pretty much it, though, guys. Uh. Other than that, I mean, I. I've been watching the X Men animated series. Not it's not an anime, but it's still godlike, and uh, it's pretty dope. It's on Disney Plus. There was actually something that I was. Oh, you know what it is? Bree Bree had me watching Soul Eater the other day. That that shit's fire as fuck. Yeah, th- didn't you watch that like three times over already? Mm, yep. Yeah. I watched that shit like multiple fucking times. <laughs> that shit was funny. fire, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still in the first season, so I'll, I guess I'll give you guys my progress updates uh, as I continue. Yo, have you whatever. seen? There's like another card anime. What? Yeah, I haven't actually watched it, but it's on Crunchyroll. It's called Card Fight Vanguard. Oh Ultimatrix. no! I I was literally gonna say, is it Vanguard? <laughs> I haven't watched it, but. I don't. I, I haven't even read the description to see if it's fire or not, or a potential candidate. I so I will say I will be honest, and I'll say this like I always am honest, right? Like growing up, once they okay when they gave me Yu Gi Oh. Let me be real. Okay, when they gave me Yu Gi Oh, I looked at anything else that was even oh even if it, even if it looked like it was a slight rip off. I did not fucking pay no mind to that shit. <laughs> I was like, well, get this fucking bogus bootleg head ass out of my face. That's why when you were young and when Bakugan was a thing, I made sure I shit on that yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I love that shit. I, I, yeah, okay. see, it was, it was made for literally anyone that was around that age. But when I'm telling you, I stayed true to my guns. I was a Yu-Gi-Oh purist. I was like, get this fucking bullshit ass Yu-Gi-Oh hot Beyblade <laughs> hybrid head ass show out of my fucking face. <laughs> so so when it comes down to card fi- uh, card fight Vanguard, I've seen that shit around for so many years and I never wanted to give it a chance because of the shit that I just said. I was like, yo, no. If it's not the king of games, if it's not my man Jaden, fuck out of here. Jayden. I mean, I stopped watching for 5Ds. I know you, didn't you watch 5Ds? I did, yeah. Yeah, see, you watched Five Ds. I, right. I gave up on the anime itself when when I saw motherfuckers in fucking vehicles. Okay, the I'll... last the, the last one I watched a little bit was like the one after Five Ds, which was kind of okay. I never Vexel? finished it. Yeah, yeah, that one was like I, but I never finished it. I think. Yeah, my my my, my thing with Yu Gi Oh right is when I. I, obviously, I watched the anime Hard Body from the original all the way through GX. Then I saw all these motherfuckers on motorcycles. I was like, all right, I'm done, right? But <laughs> I still played. I still played the game. Well, it was a while until I got to college, and that's when I I met friends that got me back into it. And then that's when I started playing again and dueling and whatnot. And I had to learn about what the fuck was going on in Five Ds when they had the synchro summons, and then Zexel introduced the. Um, the exceed summoning i think it what it was called which was what the xyz oh no 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 um it was the black cards remember they had the different types of ratings and those these monsters were able to be brought out by not using polymerization and like as long as they were the same star value that's how you fucking um exceed summon or some shit and i was like damn this is kind of fire right because at that point it made me feel like they this is how they were able to allow a lot of cards and monsters that really were kind of useless in the past to be of some good use but then they introduced the pendulums and as soon as danny showed us the fucking pendulums when we were sleeping over at his house that one day all those years ago he fuck. I swear, that that was my retirement. I never played Yu-Gi-Oh again after that. I'm dead ass. Like actually, well, outside of like any like uh, like the 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 YGO Pro, er, er, like after whatever like 
like there was probably like one or two ice that I, I went back to it and they, then they finally came out with the, the Yu-Gi-Oh mobile game where it was like simplified and like kind of back to like how it originally was for a little bit that's when like I, I kind of like went back to it for a short period of time but like when it comes down to buying the cards keeping up with the meta all that fuck that I quit as soon as I saw the pendulums and I didn't even dare to look at no fucking animes I didn't want to see none of that shit fucking happening in front of me and um i think uh, i gave one of the latest manga a chance and i actually did watch the the corresponding anime episode but it, it got too ridiculous because i don't even know what the fuck they're doing now but from the last thing that i saw after pendulum dude they had in the anime they involved like 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 objects like you would like you know how they had uh they, they they had like the battlefield like in the stadium where you were dueling and then all everything was like virtual reality and like the monsters would come up on the board and shit like that mm -hmm. this time you were literally on the board but there was terrain like there was woods and all this shit that you had to fucking run around and climb up trees and you could literally find items on the field to use in the duel and i'm like okay this is this is ridiculous like what is going on here this is like fucking mario party meets Yu Gi Oh. Shit. but yeah that's it so i don't know if you do check if you do check out card fight vanguard i guess let me know how it is i have friends that do play it or they did play it or whatever i don't know mm. but that the that, that just about does it guys brother Uji, you got anything you want to leave with the folks at home uh stay stay up stay up that's about it <laughs> all right bet stay up and uh that's gonna be it guys ladies and gentlemen make sure of course you are liking sharing subscribing throwing your comments down in the comment section below making sure that you are answering the polls hitting up the gmail send us your comments questions or any other topic ideas that you guys might want us to cover on a future episode it has been brother ooch your boy ooch we are out of here take care peace